All right, how's it going everyone? So I wanted to kind of give a really quick overview of this state management library called Zustan. I, I'll be honest with you, I haven't used it. So this is gonna be a video of me trying to use it for the first time. And I have a really basic application set up just to kind of show you like uh, what I plan on doing. So let's look at our application. I did set this up using Vite. I do recommend using Vite if you need to create a single page application because it is super fast. You literally just run this command and like you're good to go. But let's look at the app. So I have an input box here. And when I type in a word like web dev junkie, you'll notice that the output over here is stripping out all the vowels. So this is a really stupid basic application, but I wanted to kind of keep it simple so we can focus on the important part, which is state management. So let me show you how this works. And then we're gonna bring in Zustan and try to refactor it a little bit, just to kind of get our feet wet with how this library might work. So with our React application here, we have an app.jsx, which has a top level app component. And inside this app component, we have some state. That's basically to store the text that's being inputted in the input box. And you'll notice we have two components, right? We have a word input and a word output, right? This is the input box that takes in, um, that basically displays that input. And when a user types into it, it's just setting some setter that's coming from a higher level state. Okay, so we had to do, we had to raise the state and kind of do some prop drilling so that we can have one component communicate with another component. Okay, so hopefully you understand like why we did this and how this works. But as I type into this input, what we do is we pass that state variable down into word output. And all this is doing is taking the string that's passed in, stripping the vowels and displaying it. Okay, so super basic. Hopefully you understand how this is all working. But the, the benefit of doing like a state management library is as your application gets larger, you might have word input is also has a nested component and that might have a nested component. And that's where you have to keep passing down the setter just so that this nested input can like change it and stuff can get out of hand. Um, so let's just try to refactor this using Zustan. So on a new terminal here, I'm gonna go ahead and just say yarn add, I think it's just Zustan. Let's try seeing what that does, but it's always good to go to the docs and actually like figure out what you're doing. All right, so it should be installing Zustan and it tells you how to create a store. So typically with state management libraries, you have this idea of a store and that store contains different state, right? It's just kind of like a state machine kind of it just changes over time. I guess I shouldn't say the word state machine that might trigger some people. So let's just go ahead and try to create a store. And again, like I'm not going to do stuff the best practices way. I'm just going to make this as simple as possible. I'm going to make a new folder here called store. And I'm going to put a uh, text store, something like that. I don't really know. Let's just go ahead and paste that in. And what this is going to allow us to do is when we bring in Zustan, uh, we can basically call a create method, which is going to create a new store, right? This is something that kind of keeps track of state. And in this case, like, what do we need to actually create? Well, we need some text. So I'll make an empty string here, and then I'm gonna say set text. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, set the state of the text equal to state.text. Let's see, is this actually how you do it? Set text is a method you can call. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass in a string here, and then we're gonna call, uh, we're gonna do this. We don't need state. So it's Zustan um, kind of, you have this create method, you pass it a callback and then you get this setter property. And using this setter property, you can kind of make functions on the store that you can call later on. And you can kind of change how the state is set up. Now, let me make sure I didn't screw that up. Um, he's passing state here because like, I guess he needs to add one to it. So if you need access to the old state value, you can use state here, but if you don't, you can just have an empty um, object or anonymous um, function here. And let's hopefully see if this works. Again, I, I don't use Zustan. This is the first time really trying it out. So if I screw something up, don't burn me alive at the stake. Is this working correctly? That set. In fact, I think what we can do is just do this. I think I'm making this overly complicated. Let me just do that. It looks like I can do that depending on the docs. So this is gonna basically be a method we can call and it's going to update this text, okay? So 
and we have a store object now. So we can use this. I'm going to rename it to use text store and I'm going to export it. And hopefully we should be able to import that in our app now. Or actually we can import this um, inside of our word input and word output. Again, the idea of using a state management library is you don't have to like elevate state, array state, and do all this other stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this. And we don't need to worry about passing stuff in anymore because hopefully Zustan will take care of all that. So let's go ahead and save that. It's going to crash your app probably. But inside of this, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go ahead and get the text. Actually, I think I just need to get set text, right? So we can basically use that store object like this. And let's just verify I'm doing this right. So somewhere down here, it tells us how to do it. You can say use store. And you could pass it a callback if you want to get specifically something from it. But I believe you can just say use store to get everything. It's probably more proper to do uh, this. So let me say state state dot set text. All right, so this is like, I think, a, a more performant way because now you're only updating this component or re-rendering this component when this thing changes, which probably never should. So hopefully we should be able to just use this function now and type into this input. And we're going to do a similar approach. Let me make sure I import this correctly. We're going to do a similar approach for the word output. And go ahead and go over there. And then I'm at the very top of this file, instead of importing text as an argument, I'm just going to go ahead and like get the text directly from state. So again, this state object has text and set text. Those are the two properties that exist on that state for this custom hook. So we should be able to just say like state.text to get that. And auto import it. And that should hopefully work. Keep your fingers crossed. It's probably going to crash a thousand times on my app. But let's look at this. Let's see what we did. Do a hard refresh. Just make sure. Okay, so no errors. That's a good sign. I'm going to go ahead and type in what is up. And notice that again, this thing is like stripping out the vowels. Hello world ripping out the vowels, everything is working fine. So it's pretty interesting. This, this library um, allows you to kind of create state and share it amongst your components with very minimal code. Like if you use context in the past, like there's a lot of extra boilerplate you have to do to like wrap components, kind of a mess. If you use Redux at all, like that's a huge mess. Even Redux toolkit is kind of a mess. This library is super simple. Um, you just, you know, create some state you create a store, you share some state between components, and that's about it. So like, what, what would I actually recommend doing this with, or what would I recommend using this for? Again, anytime you have like application state or global state, for, in, for instance, like let's say you log in and you need to keep track of the user's object, right? The user's name, their ID. You might want to store that in its own little like user store. Uh, but yeah, that's just a quick little overview. It seemed like it was pretty easy to get going. You can kind of read through the docs to get a better understanding of how you can do some of this stuff. Um, it looks like you can use it outside of React components as well by doing like store.subscribe to stuff. But definitely check it out if you just want something super simple to be able to share some state between components. Like this took, as you saw, like it took like two seconds to basically import, create some store, create some state and a function, and then use those in my components here. So I'm impressed. I like it a lot. The best thing to do in programming is to keep stuff simple. And this library seems to do that pretty well. It seems pretty simple. So A plus for this library. Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.